patterns left and I have to tell you, Justin is already fast at work picking out some good patterns for us. Let's pick one of these patterns if you're new to the channel. Um, my son picks out a bunch of antique and vintage crochet patterns for us. He blacks them out, he cuts out the pictures, he blacks out anything that could reveal what it is. These come from all decades from the 1840s and we're gonna have some from the 1840s again. All the way up to, I told him about the 1970s as I don't have a lot of patterns from the 1980s. So let's pick one of our last two patterns. I'm just gonna dump them out and grab the first one here. And we are number five. I'm telling you, you guys saw for yourself. I didn't do that on purpose. We always wind up picking the one, almost always wind up picking the one on top. So let's just, here is our last pattern. Just gonna put it in its home for now. So now you know our next pattern is going to be number seven from 1885. This one here, today's pattern is a 1906 design. And let's see here, we have only four rows. Well, this is gonna be a quick one, isn't it? Maybe, maybe. Split Zephyr or Saxony Wool or Ice Wool, Bone Crochet Hook number 11, and another number nine. Well, let me look up those sizes as I do have a Bone Crochet Hook conversion chart. Sometimes it's hit or miss, but we're gonna go with it today. Okay, so according to my conversion chart, I have a size 10 and a half, which is a K 6.5 millimeter, and I have a size nine, which equals a 5.5 or I. So I'm going to grab a 6.5 millimeter and I wonder if an 11 is a size seven. I do have a size seven, so I'm gonna grab my size seven and then my 5.5 millimeter. I'm gonna try that. Key dog. I think this is seven. Yes, seven, it's hard to see with the neon. Oh boy, it is hard to see. Seven millimeter is really hard to see. And then I know that my 5.5 is the green. And I'm gonna grab my 6.5 just in case, just in case it's apparent that it was not meant to be a seven. Okay, okay so this I'm gonna put on reserve and these are the hooks I'm going to start off with. Okay, so a split zephyr or Saxony wool or ice wool. Let me look some of those up and see what they look like. I can kind of gauge what size I need based on what they look like because a, a lot of places will sell these old wools and you can tell by the lettering on the package compared to the thickness of the strand just around how big it's supposed to be. Okay, well my printer is too low on ink to print this off, but what I found as far as, is, um, it was up here, because this is Zephyr, but it doesn't go into Split Zephyr. Up here, it goes into Split Zephyr when we talk about Berlin wool or Zephyr, and down here at the bottom, when very fine, it is called Split Zephyr. So it says that uh, this, right here, only procurable, in two thicknesses, four thread and eight thread, commonly called single and double Berlin. So I would imagine when it's split, like it says down here, right here, when very fine, it is called split zephyr. So I think we're looking for a fine thread. Now I'm just a bit worried about our hook sizes. I don't know. <laughs> Pattern and see what the best course of action to take is. All right, to form a foundation, wind the wool, the wool several times around a pencil or the finger and work into the circle using the small hook, 24 long crochet stitches. Join. Now this is the 1900, so a long crochet stitch is, well, I'll show you. Okay, to form a foundation, wind the wool wind the wool several times around a pencil or the finger and work in to the circle. Okay, so it doesn't say how many times, it just says several times. I'm gonna grab my 5.5, I don't, 
I mean, if they're looking for something small, if it's going to be a pencil, I'm just going to go around my finger, what, maybe one, two, three, nope, one, two, three, four, five. Is five enough, I wonder? Okay, I can't get it off my finger. Do it a little looser. One, two, three, four, five. I feel like I'm about to do some Irish crochet. All right, well, doing that, I made some of the loops longer than the others. Doggone it. All right, well, that just made all of the loops bigger. Ugh, the struggle is real, y'all. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Trying to keep it even, there we go. Okay, and work into the circle using the small hook, 24 long crochet stitches. So I'm gonna start with a chain four or a chain three, chain four. Yarn over twice, one, no, yarn over once like a double crochet. Pull through two loops, Pull through just one loop. I actually said pull through two loops. Let me start that again. I'm sorry, you guys. Yarn over, go into the ring, pull up a loop. Pull through your first loop. Then pull through two, pull through two. That is going to be an Edwardian era long stitch. This is a U.S. pattern. I have got several books from the Edwardian era that are U.S. patterns and this is exactly how a long stitch is worked. So we yarn over once, we go into the loop, pull through one, into the ring, I should say, sorry. Then pull through your first loop, then yarn over and pull through two, and pull through two. Yarn over, go into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. That's why I started with a chain four because a long stitch, it's kind of the length of a treble. It's just a little shorter than a treble. It's kind of a happy medium between a double crochet, a US double crochet and a US treble crochet. So it wants us to do 24 of these. So I'm gonna count my chain four as one. So one, two, three, four. And here we go, this'll be five. Pull through one, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, so I'll be back whenever I have 24. Okay, there are my 24. Again, I have almost, almost no confidence in the hook sizes that I am using. Okay, row two. Oh, we have to join. So I'm going to join into the top of my starting chain four. All right, okay, uh, miss three stitches and work, it's saying miss, which is a UK term, but that doesn't mean that they didn't blend terms because the UK, no matter how, you can go back 200 years and you won't find a single crochet except for a brief period of time when they were using the term single crochet to mean slip stitch. Um, all right, so miss three stitches and work nine long between the third and fourth stitches of the preceding row. Miss three and one double crochet through both loops of the stitch between, through both loops of the stitch between the sixth and seventh of the last row. You, you think you think that such a small pattern would be easy, but no. <laughs> okay, miss three. What do I need to start with? Do I need to start with a, another chain four then? One, two, three, four. It doesn't say to start with that, but this is one of those 
you should already know what I mean kind of patterns. Miss three. So I'm going to count this one as worked. So one, two, three, miss three, and work nine long between the third and fourth stitches. See, it's saying between. That's why I'm confused why this one says both loops. It says both loops of the stitch between. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Miss three, nine long, line long between the third and fourth. Right, okay. So one, two, three, so in between right here. And we're going to work nine long. One. Two. Three. four, five. Oh, is it actually going to print right now? No. Okay. My printer all of a sudden made a sound. Yeah. Is it? You guys might hear my printer go. I clicked print on that thing I had to show you, but that was like 15 minutes ago. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. Maybe not. Seven. It's doing that thing where it says I don't have enough ink whenever there's still plenty of ink to print one page. It just wants me to buy more. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got distracted. <laughs> okay, and nine. Right. Okay. Miss three, one, two double crochet through both loops of the stitch between the sixth and the seventh. Come on, you guys know that doesn't make any sense. You guys know that doesn't make any sense. I know someone's going to tell me what they probably meant, but come on, let's be real here. You know, you know that you don't know what that means. <laughs> there is no stitch between the sixth and the seventh. There is no six and a half. It would make sense if they said between the sixth and the eighth stitch, sure. But there are no, no, you know that don't make no sense. <laughs> so, Miss Three, one, two, three, which is gonna be the sixth stitch, this one's going to be the seventh, and it says to work one double crochet through both loops. Double crochet. I don't feel bad. I do not. You all know this don't make no sense. <laughs> work this to the end of the circle. To the end of the circle, yeah. So I'm going to work this. And I'm not going to worry about both loops of any stitch that doesn't exist between the sixth and the seventh of the last row. I'm not. I'm not going to drive myself crazy trying to worry about things that don't exist. One, two, three. And between these stitches here, one, two, three, right here, I'm going to work my nine long. I will be right back. Boy, I got a little sassy there, didn't I? <laughs> I was snapping back at people who weren't even snapping at me. I'm getting sassy, I guess. I'll be back. Okay, work that all around. And I'm sorry for the sassiness before. There, there is no stitch from the previous round that exists between uh, the sixth and seventh stitch. There, there are no both loops, and no, they don't mean the side of the stitch. That's not what they mean by both loops. That's just, it's just a mistake. Okay, row three, miss three of the nine long in the last row and work six long between the third and fourth stitch. Six long between the sixth and seventh. See, now it's saying it right. Uh, miss three, one double crochet. 
repeat from there three times. So I know I need to start with a double crochet. I should have started with a chain three instead of a chain four last time. I was assuming because it said long. So I had to, I had to slip stitch into my fourth chain up um, just to keep it from tugging too much on one side. But I'm gonna start with a chain three this time because I now know we're working doubles between. So we're gonna miss three, one, two, three, and into the, between the fourth, between the fourth, no, between the third and fourth stitch. Yes, sorry. And we're going to work between the third and fourth stitch, we're gonna work six long. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, then six long between the sixth and seventh. So we're just gonna skip one stitch. No, we're gonna skip one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, skip one stitch right here and work our six long again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. What I have the least confidence in with this pattern is the thread and hook size. That's what I'm not so confident in, but I'm going with it. I kind of like how fluffy it looks. I really like how fluffy it looks actually. Okay. Um, six between the sixth and seventh, miss three, one double crochet, repeat from three more times. So miss three, well, I have four to miss. Was I supposed to skip three here? Okay, one, two, three, work the six. That's four, five, between the sixth. Oh, I did, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. I messed up, skip three skip three again so so four five and then here is six and here is seven so I was supposed to work right here so skipping these three right here okay so I'm going to work this all over again off camera I will be right back reworked those six in the correct area now we skip three and we work a double over the top of the double then skip three again <clears throat> one two three and right here is where we're going to work our next group of six long. I'll be right back. I'm going to work this all around. Okay, so I worked all around and I joined at the top of my starting chain three with a slip stitch. Now for round four, miss three, work six long, miss three, work six between, two groups of six in the last row to form a corner. Miss three, six long, miss three, one double crochet over one double crochet in the last row and repeat. Repeat this three times. These last three rows form the pattern corners being as directed, form the corners, wait, form the corners being I'm, I read that wrong. The last three rows form the pattern, the corners being, as directed, worked differently in each round and more groups of six long, one double crochet being, of course, worked at the sides in each, I, maybe this, I'm having a moment of third grade and having to read in front of the class. <laughs> I'm just gonna go from here. In the last round of the, an edge is formed by working three chain 
And what, what is this? Three chain and one double crochet on the top of each long stitch. Just made before on the top of, I keep, that's not a comma. Don't read that as a comma. On the top of each long stitch just made before working the next. The larger hook should be used after the 14th round. Oh. Okay, let's just worry about round four for now, and then we'll come back to 14 rounds. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start with a double crochet. One, two, three three or a chain three for a double crochet miss three one two one two three and work six long I'll be right back okay six long <clears throat> miss three work six long miss three work six between two groups of six and last row so right here Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. In the last row to form corner. Miss three, six long, miss three, one double crochet. Okay, I get it. So right here, I'm gonna work six. Right here, I'm gonna work a double. So I'm gonna do that and be right back. Okay, so I see that this is going to be the corner here. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark the space between that is one corner. So basically all around, we're gonna work right here in between all of the groups of six, we work six. In the space, we work six. In the groups, we work six. And over the double, we work a double all around. So I'm gonna do that all around and I will be right back. Okay, I worked that all around. Now, whenever they said the corners will be different every round, my guess is every round there's going to be a corner where there's either a space or it's a solid shell. I think that's going to alternate. Every other round you're going to work a space and then every other round you're going to work a shell. I think that's what they were talking about because that makes sense to me because that's what we have here. We have a space, we have a shell, a space, and a shell. So, and we started off with a space. So space, shell, space, shell. So it just makes sense to me that that is what they're talking about. I don't know how many rows this is meant to be. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uncover it and see how many rows that this is meant to be. But we know it's at least 14, but it says after 14 rounds. So is this a bedspread maybe? A bedspread being worked out? Ooh, wouldn't that be neat? Ooh, or a tablecloth, but it's a little thick for a tablecloth. I wonder if this is like a bedspread, like a duvet cover. Let's see. I'm going to run down the hall and get the picture, and then we'll see what we need to do from there. Well, now I'm a little confused. Uh, because we're working in a round, it doesn't look like it's folded in half. And yes, as you can see, well, they didn't work it very big, did they? Is this the center here? No, it's not. Uh, yeah, you can see every other row, it's a shell, a space, a shell, a space, a shell, a space, ending with um, a space. But are we just, were we just, does it fold? Is that what it is? We fold it? Maybe we fold it. Probably we fold it. <clears throat> It doesn't look folded though. I wish there was more information that I can read about this. That's, that's how that was. I do wish there was more information that I could read about this. It's really neat, but if I'm honest, with it being open like this, I kind of want to make it a bedspread. <laughs> 
like I don't want it to be a shawl. I want it to be a bedspread. I liked my idea. <laughs> anyway, um, it doesn't look folded in half, so I'm a little confused, but that's okay. Let's work another round and see how successful we are at working the round without the instruction. So chain three and in between this shell, we work six double crochet. I'm sorry, that's my fault. My bad, we work six long. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then right here, hmm. Now, do I need to work two here? No, okay. Repeat the last three rows of the pattern. Okay, so the last three rows, two, one, oh, miss three stitches, work nine long. Oh, okay, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I will hold this pattern up so that you guys can read it because it would seem that it is going to change every round. <clears throat> <clears throat> I would imagine until you have it secured to memory. Between, okay, one double crochet, so I work a double here. Now, in my corner, I'm going to work a shell, though, right? One double crochet through both loops. Um, and then it just says to repeat. Work this to the end. Work nine here in the corner again. There's, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, just follow what it says. Work nine here. Okay, there are the nine, and then we work a double crochet here, and then we work nine right here. So that's gonna be the way this round will be all around. And then you will follow round three and then round four over and over and over again. It's gonna be, here. We'll, here's, here's what the repeat will be. Round two through four. Oh, there we go. Here, I'll zoom in on the round two and then the rest. Okay, so to be honest with you, I don't want it to be a shawl. <laughs> I really want it to be a bedspread, like a really pretty bedspread. That's what I want it to be. And that's what I want it to just be. We don't have, it doesn't have to be a shawl. We don't have to make it a shawl. I don't even particularly find it to be a very attractive shawl. I think laid flat like this, it's a vastly more attractive bedspread or tablecloth even or curtain. It's not thick. It's, I mean, it's a little bit thick as you can see, but it's very lightweight. At least the cotton I'm using is very lightweight, very lightweight. This is A-N-N-E, C I R. C-U-L-O-A-N-N-E, and it is, you can find it on Amazon, and it is Brazilian virgin cotton, and I love it. It's, it's got kind of a 
ripple effect to it. I really, really like it. It's really great stuff. Kind of underrated. Okay, guys. Well, I mean, that's kind. this is kind of where I'm going to leave it here because this is the pattern. We now know it's a shawl, but in my mind, it's a gorgeous anything else. <laughs> Bedspread, tablecloth, curtain. I really think this could be a great, if you didn't want it to be really big, you can make it a bathroom curtain. And I think that would be really great. It's really quite lightweight. You guys really should check this stuff out. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is the right size hook that we are supposed to use. This one, and it says to use a seven, but genuinely, Sevens are not common. Like you're not going to find a seven millimeter in a, a whole completed set, but you will find a 6.5 millimeter. So I think a 5.5 and a 6.5 will be fine. But if you have a seven, these are your hook sizes. Okay, guys, let me know what you think of this one. I actually really like it. Um, we just have one left to go. Here she is, number seven, no picture. That's the big bummer of this one, no picture, and it is a massive wall of text. Ugh, 1885. So I will see you guys in the next mystery, the last mystery of the year.